human brain is wired to simplify your daily tasks. When it recognizes repetitive actions following specific triggers, it develops what we call habits. Most habits do serve a purpose, allowing us to get through our day more efficiently. But when these actions are set on autopilot in our brain, breaking them can be extremely difficult, which is why it's much better to replace them. There are neural pathways between the messages that, that get fired up and passed along, what we call these neural pathways, okay? Now, when you, you already have that built in there, it's like, for example, how do you, how do, you do your hands? When, if I ask you to fold your hands, well, you have a specific way you do it. And each time you do it, you're going to normally do it like this. Now I ask you to change it and do it that way. Well, it's very uncomfortable. It doesn't feel natural, right? But you can learn to do it that way. You build a new neural pathway. The thing is, the old one is still there. And so you will slip back to that sometimes, and those are called lapses. This is why continually practicing the new good habit you want to form is so important, even after lapses. This determination to change is one of the key factors to success in replacing habits, which is why before you start, you need to properly assess your motivation and confidence level. Motivation is a funny thing because you can become motivated. Like for example, New Year's Eve could be a motivating point. Mm -hmm. People, New Year's is a new year, they new everything, change. they want change. So that's a good motivator. But you've got to have something to sustain it. And you also have to believe that you can keep this and sustain it. Because we all talk about sustainability, that you're able to continue it. Doing it for somebody else is not motivation. Mm -hmm. You have to be motivated for yourself to be able to sustain this. And then you see the, the confidence, believing that I'm able to do it. Again, I have to be the one that decides that I'm going to make sure that I get through with this. Here's a tip. Use the readiness to change chart. Rate from 1 to 10 your motivation and confidence in being able to execute the change in habits. A score of 6 in both areas is ideal for really being able to execute the changes. Then identify the three R's, the reminder, the routine, and the rewards from the specific habit. The three R's are reminders, and the reminders are the triggers. Okay, so the reminder is the trigger. So for example, let me tell you a bad habit I have. I go home, I love Tuesday nights, I love having the have nots. Mm -hmm. So I go home, I'll take a nap, set my alarm, and I'll get up for eight o'clock. I get up quarter to eight, go to the fridge, I'll take out snacks, mm -hmm. I'll put popcorn in the uh, microwave, and I'll bring everything to the table, mm -hmm. and I'll sit back, and I will watch have and have not a munch. And that's the thing, I, I, until I was reading the study, I realized, I need to put healthy stuff. If I want to continue to do that, I need to bring healthy stuff. But those are, that's a trigger. They need to change that whole routine. Mm -hmm. Now, I can still have that trigger, right? But I can change how I manage the trigger. I want to watch haves and have nots, but I need to, if I'm going to eat, I need to have something healthy, mm -hmm. right? And I can get healthy stuff that I can put there. I can do fruits, I can do some veggie sticks. Mm -hmm. But it has to be something that I like. Mm -hmm. I don't want to punish myself because if it becomes something that you're punishing yourself, it's not going to work either. You're going to get tired of that. That's where the rewards part come in? Right. So the reward, when I sit down, I have to enjoy it. Lastly, assess how you feel immediately before engaging in the habit and know what emotional strait triggers your bad habits. It's very important that we start now taking care of our own health. And again, I, I talk about self-care. Yeah. We are responsible for our own health. We're responsible for our own feelings. We are responsible for ourselves. And so it's really important that even if you don't have any support out there, you have to make a plan for how you are going to make sure that you are doing the things that are good for you.